by Diniku, arranged by Yasha Heifetz. <laughs> shelf or something, you know, laying flat. There's only so much you can do, but um, I do have a safe that's fireproof for 45 minutes and special alarms and things like that. You know, I'm, I'm responsible for this thing. I think the most dangerous thing is probably leaving it in a car unattended mm -hmm. or setting it down and running over it. <laughs> <laughs> My mother has drilled these things into me. When I was little, I left my bow on a couch in Vermont 
um, in the summer, and the sun came in. And I was, it was, a, it was a, just a little bow. A little, I had a little violin, a little bow. And I, I went to play tennis with my dad. I think I was probably six or seven years old. Came back. Whew, I got in so much trouble. My bow had exploded. <laughs> it was horse hair flying everywhere. It snapped at the tip. It got taut like a bow and arrow. Tightened up in that heat and just bang, snapped. So, I think, thank goodness it wasn't any, anything valuable. I mean, it's not, a, it's not about the money. It's just about preserving these for the next generation and the future. I don't know what, uh, if I could live with myself if I damaged something through some careless accident. So there's a special part of your brain that switches on when you're, when you're dealing with something like this. And I've had it for 20 years, you know. It, this, this fall, this November, was the 20th anniversary of the auction. Now keep in mind, I got it. I was about to turn 17. I was a senior in high school. And um, the next year, I went to do my undergrad at USC because I wanted to study this particular violin teacher named Robert Lipset. And I wasn't allowed to take the violin to college because my mother didn't think the freshman dorm was the same place. <laughs> Very wise, right? I should mention that, you know, my mother and I fought so much growing up because she would wanted me to practice and I didn't want to practice. <laughs> and I'm very thankful that she made me practice now. She's, she's not here, she's in Pennsylvania because she went to Juilliard, she got her master's from Juilliard. She worked very hard after getting that late start on the cello. And there she met my father who was um, a recording engineer by hobby of classical music, a patron of the arts, businessman. And was always there, quietly in the background, supporting whatever she wanted to do to torture her children. <laughs> <laughs> right, Anna? <laughs> but he studied opera and voice, and my father inherited this perfect pitch from his mother, who was from Holland. And I got it. My brother doesn't have it, my mom doesn't have it. So I think my mom picked him because she thought it would produce a good musical child. <laughs> he has the most beautiful hands, my father. It's like, you know, and when you see a violinist's hands, they, I, you know, I think she was like looking at his hands and saying, hmm. <laughs> I find myself doing that too, even though, <laughs> even though I don't have time to, for all that. <laughs> Toby's just horrified. <laughs> oh, Toby's late husband, Bert Phillips, was a wonderful man, and he taught my brother the cello. My brother also went to Luzerne. And uh, Bert and Toby were so instrumental in the development of my career, because I attended their camp when I was 14, 15 years old, where I learned the complete overview of everything you need to be a young professional, from solo, chamber music, um, symphony orchestra, private lessons, uh, solo performances at their camp, plus made lasting friendships for a lifetime and had the lake and got taken to hear the Philadelphia Orchestra concerts that were going on nearby. And then they brought me back many times as a guest artist and um, then recently have asked me to carry on their legacy by taking over their music camp, which they ran for 30 years. This is a, an incredible uh, joy adding to my life because what I do is so incredibly lonely and so much pressure and so strenuous. And to uh, have this, this family that I work with, um, we all do it remotely, phone, you know, our iPhones, our computers, it's amazing what you can do traveling around the world. But we come together for two months in the summer. And um, so many of the ch uh, children from Austin will be coming to our camp this summer and continuing their summer education. So it's, it's really worthwhile. If you get a chance to come up, it's near, near Saratoga Springs in, in the Adirondacks. Very beautiful. You can escape the heat and humidity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I look forward to meeting you after this. If, if anyone would like an autograph, and especially for the students, I have some 8 by 10 complimentary photos to sign for you. And uh, if you have any more questions. But we'd like to conclude with one of my favorite gypsy pieces. It's called Chardash by Vittorio Monti. He wrote this at the turn of the century. Uh, that means 1900. And <laughs> 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 it's 
can be either played for violin and piano or violin and orchestra. Uh, and being a gypsy, well, we're both gypsies. This is right up our alley. So thank you so much for coming to this event and supporting champs.